robins flying through the sky, tulips coming up from the ground, and the very first long combination of vehicles rolling down the 401. Yes, it's springtime in Ontario. I'm James Menzies for Transportation Matters, and before we talk about specking and maintaining LCVs, let me grab my coat because this is still Canada and I'm freezing. Joining me today is George Cobham Jr. of Glass Van Great Dane. George, over the summer, apparently there were 4,114 LCV trips in Ontario, covering 1.28 million kilometers. There were no violations, and more importantly, there were no accidents. Are you finding from your fleet customers there's a lot of interest in, in getting on board with the LCV pilot project? Absolutely. Pretty much uh, every uh, mid-sized to large fleet in southern Ontario has expressed interest in the program. Um, you know, they're you know, very interested in uh, learning more about the equipment, finding out what it costs, and what it takes to get uh, on board with pulling this equipment down the road. Now if I'm a fleet manager and I want to integrate some LCVs into my fleet, what do I need in terms of equipment to, to get myself up and running? Well, you need a tractor that's specced to within the uh, LCV requirements. There are specifics set out by the ministry as to what type of tractor you can use. And then, of course, you need a, uh, a trailer outfitted with a pintle hook or a uh, B bogey, and then a converter dolly, and then, of course, uh, your trailing trailer. Uh, there's nothing really special about the trailing trailer. It's the lead trailer and the converter dolly where there are certain guidelines that you need to follow. Now, as I understand it, there are, there are different configurations of LCV, A-Train, B-Train. Can you explain the difference between the two? Well, an A-Train is uh, basically you have a lead trailer. The lead trailer has a pintle hook design on it. And then you have a second vehicle, and that's your converter dolly. Uh, and that connects to the lead trailer. It has a fifth wheel. The converter dolly has a fifth wheel, and then that couples to the trailing trailer. Whereas in a B-train setup, the lead trailer has what's called a B-bogey, and that can be either a two-axle or a three-axle configuration, and that bogey slides out from under the lead trailer, and it has a fifth wheel on it to couple the trailing trailer too. There's no converter dolly on a, on a B-bogey. In your experience, what are more fleets opting for and what are the pros and cons of, of each configuration? Well, there is the idea out there that a B-bogey is more stable and that the trailing trailer follows closer and, and in more control uh, behind the setup. But, uh, you know, B-bogeys are expensive. It's uh, a slightly more complex system uh, for the lead trailer. With a uh, converter dolly, uh, you know, you're licensing another vehicle. You know, it has another license plate. You have another unit number to follow. So there's complexities there. You know, there's issues with connecting the dolly. Uh, it can be a two-man job. You know, a single operator uh, may have difficulty, you know, hooking up the, the converter dolly to the sets of trailers. Uh, whereas with a B-bogey, it can be a one-man job. So assuming I have an existing fleet of trailers, can I simply incorporate those trailers into my LCV fleet or am I further ahead buying new trailers for my LCV operations? You can retrofit existing trailers in your fleet uh, for the LCV program, uh, but it's not as simple as just attaching a pintle hook to the rear of the trailer. There are other requirements as far as the air system, uh, a speed up valve to accommodate the fact that there is a lag in the air system. They want the trailing trailer brakes to activate quickly. You can retrofit existing trailers, but other complexities with respect to once you retrofit a trailer, you need to have it tested. And there aren't testing facilities on every street corner. So, you know, it can get more complicated. So assuming I do want to purchase some new trailers from my LCV fleet, what are some of the specking considerations to keep in mind? Is it just like specking any other 53 foot van or are there other considerations? Well, the first thing, of course, is the pintle hook design. Um, the, uh, the requirements of the LCV program state that you have an air snubber on your pintle hook, and that basically keeps constant pressure on the pintle hook hitch so that the uh, converter dolly is well connected to the pintle hook. In two weeks' time, George and I will be back to take a closer look at the converter dolly. For Transportation Matters, this has been James Menzies.